everyone, and welcome to the Campaign Her Podcast. I'm your host and a Capri Sun that you excitedly squeezed just a little too hard, and now there's a pea-shaped wet spot on your nice khakis, Allie Pippin. Guys, I lost my new tweezers today. Okay, I should probably I should probably back up. That's not a good start. How about this? I'm a hairy person. Um, if word came out that my mother knew Cousin It from the Adams family in college, I would believe it. And like, I would think that they hooked up a little bit. And and nothing has been worse <laughs> for my hairy problem than old age. The older I get, the more my hair chooses to torture me. I've lost a lot of it on my head, and I spend about a thousand hours in the shower just shaving my legs. Not necessarily because I have like such hairy legs that it takes a thousand hours, because I do shave them often, but because I can't fucking see the hairs on my legs in my dimly lit shower. And then I think I did a great fucking job and I get in the car and the sun hits my knees and it's like hair everywhere. (laughs) Just the hairiest fucking knees. Like my hair has become one of those like UV activated airbrush t-shirts you get that says Washington DC on your eighth grade sleepaway field trip. I can't see it until it's in the sun. And then not only does it look like I'm wearing wool tights, <laughs> but I can feel it like tossing in the summer breeze. Or, oh my God, I'll be sitting in a meeting and I'll like run my hands under my chin and I'll find a fucking hair. And then for, <laughs> for whatever reason, a magnet is activated and I can't not touch it. Until that hair is gone. So all meeting, I'm like drawing attention to this fucking old witch hair growing out of my chin. And then I'm in another meeting and it's grown. (laughs) It's longer. And by the time I get home, it's like four inches long and it's white. And it looks like the finger of a white walker like beckoning me towards death. So tweezers are like a sacred item in my house, okay? They are critical to my survival, They also happen to be like the only tweezers my entire home has. So they've kept me from becoming a hairy creature and they've also met my entire family's tweezing needs for like ever. So I thought I'm 30 now. I'm a grown woman. I deserve my own pair of tweezers. So yesterday on a self-care trip to Target, I treat myself to a few things, you know, like some cotton t-shirts, a ten dollar reed diffuser that smells like lavender a scented candle and like a new pair of premium diamond tipped tweezers my current tweezers work just fine but they are not diamond tipped and they are frequently used by my husband to pluck out his ingrown hair on wherever he decides to shave recently so holding those sweet tweezers in my hands at boutique target i thought these would be just for me my secret spectacular tweezers for my chin and ingrown hairs only. When I got home, I like unloaded all the bags from my car. I unloaded the tweezers onto the kitchen table like everything else. And at some point, I moved the tweezers from my kitchen table to my bathroom counter. And then (laughs) tiny like tweezer sized aliens entered my home through the exhaust fans in my master bathroom. They saw my new tweezers still in package and they said, Let's fuck with this woman who lives here. And what I can only assume was like a glistening, lime green, lasery ray of light. Or maybe like a mist. The aliens left as quickly as they came. Off to probe their enemies with my diamond tipped beauties. Finding them missing just put me in a panic. I went through every drawer. Every cabinet. I'm under the sink in the kitchen with like the dishwasher pods box, like, where are you? I accused my children. I yelled at my husband for gaslighting me. I knocked over and spilled (laughs) the new reed diffuser, which turns out that can destroy your furniture, fun fact. Um, Sending that lavender scented oil into every crevice of my brand new dresser, effectively ruining this like treat I gave myself on my first day out of the house in like forever. And I searched for these tweezers for like hours. And I I just eventually gave up. I wrote my entire family out of my will. I had yelled at everyone and I went to bed mad. And as I laid my head down, I wrapped my arms around my pillow and I fucking found them under my pillow. And I was so relieved. I was so happy. But then I was like immediately suspicious. 
Like, there was no way someone didn't hide them right there. Like, right? Like, under my pillow? And my family said, oh, no, they didn't. But come on, come on. Okay, like, somebody hit them. Somebody's trying to pull the ass one on me. I guess I need a real moral here. So, um, I guess the problem here wasn't the tweezers or the reed diffuser. I shouldn't have had a temper tantrum as a 30-year-old woman. You know, I screamed in the hallway after all it was over. If I had actually treated myself from time to time, if I didn't wait three months to buy a new fucking pair of tweezers, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> I wouldn't give a ass ass if they went missing. I wouldn't have literally dug through the garbage to find them. Yeah. And you guys, maybe we should all just be a little bit hairier. Fuck tweezers. Don't let them hold the power over you. I don't know. I, I don't know. Guys, it was a distraught day. <laughs> I am distraught. I'm distraught. It's late. Today, we're talking all about confidence. Um, because having no hair and new tweezers makes me feel confident. Um, and all the ways that you guys feel confident, too, that you share with us on Instagram. So stick around. We will be right back. When I got this idea for this podcast, the first thing I had to accept was that I had zero idea what I was doing. Um, and I wanted nothing more than to have someone just take this stuff that I'm thinking right out of my head and put it in your ears for you to listen to. And that's why I am so happy the Google Fairies led me to Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it is really the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. One, it's free. Number two, it's free. Number three, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. I have it on my iPad. Um, Anchor then will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many, many more. And you get to make money from your podcast with absolutely no minimum listenership. It's really everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So hey, if you're like me, you're ready to get into this sweet pod game, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Friends, it was a Saturday last year when my life changed. I woke up in bed with a clear realization. I saw, I saw a path in front of me that I knew I had to take. It was a vision as, as clear as anything I've seen with my actual eyes. It was a decision a decision I felt in my heart and in my soul. And I, I shook my husband awake from his Saturday morning slumber and I shouted, honey! And my excitement was just overflowing in my voice. And he opened his eyes and he blinked his sleep away. And he saw my undoubtedly gorgeous, <laughs> smiling, beaming with glee face in the early morning sunlight. And I saw the look on his face as he realized whatever I was about to say, whatever I was excited about was important. And he like, he rubbed his eyes and he like grumbled a little bit and he waited for me to respond. And I said, I'm finally going to do it, Justin. I said, today is the day. Today I'm going to finally buy a fucking jean jacket. And yes, this really happened. Why does everyone keep asking me that? <laughs> you see, I have always loved the way I look in denim. My go-to Friday uniform, as I call it, has been black pants, black boots, a black tank top, and like a denim, faux denim shirt for most of my professional career. It's comfortable. It's badass. It says I'm laid back with the denim, but don't fuck with me in the all black. And once upon a time, aka college, I used to have a jean jacket. And I bought my last jean jacket in college. And I remember like holding my breath through an excursion through Hollister, partly because of excitement and partly because you would die from all the perfume in the air. And I, I ripped the tags off this jean jacket the second I exited the store. And I like slipped it on in the, the main foyer of the South Bend Mall. And I sent a selfie to the guy I was dating. And he like immediately texted back and he was like, you look like a farmer's wife. And that's a compliment. It wasn't a compliment. That's not a compliment. No, not to me. And I never wore that jean jacket again. So flash forward to my decision to invest in a new jean jacket. Like the jump from denim shirt to denim jacket seems like an obvious one. But like most women who provide for their households, I like agonized over it. 
I weighed the cost and the benefits of owning the jacket. I asked myself, like, am I taking something away from my family and getting this? Like, will it ever be cold enough in Florida to wear it? And after weeks and months and years of deliberating, I finally realized in the early morning hours that it was time. And we got our family in the car. We made the pilgrimage to Old Navy. I bought the jacket and it sat in my closet for like a week. And I just looked at it and was like, one day I'll be brave. But on that Friday, I woke up. I dressed in my usual Friday uniform with like the new jacket twist instead of the, um, you know, the, the denim shirt. And I took a look at myself in the mirror. Okay. And what can only be described next is one of the most elaborate metaphors I've ever gone on in my life. So please bear with me. Have you ever seen the feel good hit of the century? Mamma Mia 2. Here we go again. Okay. Like if you've seen it, (laughs) You know what I'm about to say. If you're not, like, work with me here. Close your eyes for a minute and picture Cher. Musical goddess, gorgeous woman, gay icon, descending a wrought iron semi-spiral staircase in a Greek villa. Okay, her skin is flawless. She's, like, actually shimmering in the sun and it's nighttime. There are, like, fireworks in the distance as she just like effortlessly sings have you heard the drums Fernando over an audience of like adoring fans okay this woman is wearing high-waisted white linen pants cinched at the waist they're billowy but also flattering okay she's got on like a sequin shrug jacket She's just exuding confidence as she's slow motion walking down these stairs, singing Fernando, okay, bursting with style and grace and just singing the hell out of the song. She is living Fernando in this moment, okay? She is Cher. And in this context, she is Meryl Streep's mother and she is an actual angel. Do you see it? Now open your eyes. There's not a doubt in my mind that Cher saw the Fernando scene on screen and like did one of those super powerful women like lean back, nod and smiles. You know, the one where like a boss lady puts a single hand on her chin and like daintily grasps it like it's a popsicle stick. Okay, and then she leans back in her chair and she like purses her lips and like nods ever so slightly and like smiles a little bit like she's got like a little secret and she's like, "Mm -hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. It's a powerful move. It's a powerful movie. It tells everyone around her, that's me. That's how I feel right now in every moment. I am feeling this. I am feeling myself. I am a queen. And looking at myself in the mirror, wearing my new jean jacket, I'm, I felt like I'm certain Cher felt watching herself descend that staircase in the Greek villa singing Fernando. Powerful woman, nod and on. That moment of my reflection, like I felt like I had single-handedly brought the jean jacket back in fashion. (laughs) I could like just get on Instagram and be like, enjoy your denim clad fall escapades, Instagram. Like ride that hayride, pick that pumpkin, sip that PSL and do it all in your jean jackets and just like thank your girl who rocked one so hard the world took notice. I felt confidence radiating from the tips of my fingers all the way down to my toes, okay? I felt it tingling on my scalp if you've seen avatar the last airbender you know when ang goes in the avatar state and like his blue tattoos light up imagine that being like my confidence out of my eyeballs out of my open mouth arrow tattoos down my arms down my legs down my head okay i went into work (laughs) and i swear in the background that like bg song staying alive was playing okay strutting in okay i got shit done I worked hard, harder than I normally would on a Friday. I felt strong and capable in my cuffed denim sleeves, okay? And when I got home that evening, before I even said hello, before I even like yoo my way down the hallway so that my kids and my husband knew I was home, I could tell that my family and my house felt and noticed my confidence. And I could tell my husband really did. Like it oozed out of me even hours after putting the jacket on, even after hours of working. And in that moment of coming home, I asked my husband to do something I never asked my husband to do. 
I asked him to take a picture of me. Okay, like nothing against my husband. He's a great guy. Wonderful husband. Terrible, like, hype man when it comes to photography. Okay, always the worst angles. Always, like, too close. Okay, always, like, you know, all the chins. You know, or, like, my pooch is out. Whatever. Okay. But I wanted him to take a picture, which is how I knew that I was feeling so confident. Okay, I wanted to remember how that jacket made me feel invincible. How it felt to just be so confident in my skin. And I still have those pictures on my phone, okay? Like, and in those pictures, I'm like hamming it up for the camera. I'm like clutching the lapels and the collar of my coat and like tossing my head back like a model in a Sears catalog. Um, Parker, my youngest, snuck into a picture and she's like up against the wall and she's just looking at me like the goddamn queen of the universe that I am. I will definitely share these on Instagram, but it's one of the first photos I've taken of myself like late in my 20s, early in my 30s, where I can't seek out my flaws. And I'll admit, like, I'm, I've changed a lot since my 20s. Like, I would not say that I'm at my most attractive. I'm at my most confident, sure, but I've gained weight, you know, like, I, uh, uh, having babies ruins your body. <laughs> Spoiler alert. So, like, I, like, I don't like to take pictures of myself. I don't like to look at pictures of myself because they make me feel like trash. But looking at these pictures of me in the jean jacket, like, how could I feel bad? How can I? I look at these pictures and I see my sense of humor, my on-brand poise, my sass, my silliness, and most importantly, my self-confidence, which can be really, really hard to find some days. And the jean ja jacket taught me, it taught me one thing I wish that I could just scream at every woman that I know. Confidence begets confidence. Okay, the more confident you feel, the more confident you are and you become, if I was confident that I wanted the jacket, confident enough to buy it, I would have felt confident sooner. Instead, I spent months agonizing over whether or not I should buy the one thing I've never felt more confident in. I should have just stopped worrying about it and just bought the damn thing sooner. So here's the skinny, friends. If you're feeling yourself, let yourself know. Let the world know. Tell everyone you know. Oh my God, request a picture of your confident self and look at it awesome. And always, always, always save your selfies. Always. It may feel a tiny bit narcissistic, but you can unpack that with a clinical help and psychologist later, right? But when I'm having shitty days, days where I am full river troll status, okay? No shower, long white walker finger chin hairs, okay? Looking at selfies where I love the way I look in this body that I have today, that I have right now, make me feel better. It reminds me that we all have some off days. <laughs> we all have bad hair days or depressive episodes where we don't feel like hotties with bodies. But we are beautiful people inside and out. And we believed in that moment that we were beautiful because we memorialized it with a photo. So always save your selfies. And if there's something you do or wear or a person you see or a song you listen to or a mantra you repeat, and that thing, whatever it is, makes you feel confident, do it, listen to it, say it, see that person, okay? Do that thing that makes you feel your best, strongest self. And when you feel that confidence wavering, do it again. <laughs> Put that song on repeat, okay? Visit that person constantly. Don't wait to do the thing until you feel your confidence is shaking. Don't wait to do the thing until you psych yourself out of it. Do it every single day if you can. You are... Spoiler alert, you are the only one who can make you feel your most confident self. Get out there. Buy that jean jacket, honey. Get that confidence you've been lacking. And shit, rent Mama Mia too. Here we go again. We all deserve to feel like Cher on a freaking Tuscan villa, Greek villa staircase. All right. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back. Um, I've had a tiny Mamma Mia dance party in my living room. I'm ready. You know, I'm ready for this next piece. And um, so a few episodes ago, <laughs> you all really seem to enjoy sharing um, your fears with me um, and just endowing me with the fear of a ground beef covered swamp creature coming out of a public pool. So this time around, because you like that so much, I asked all of you to do it again, and um, I wanted you to tell me what makes you feel confident, and hot damn, you delivered! 
You delivered. You submitted them through um, Instagram to me. Um, and I'm just excited to, to read through them. So here we go. We'll just start reading through these. The question again was, what makes you feel confident? Okay. This first one says, listening to my favorite music. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Music. I've said this before. Music has such an impact on me. Um, and I really feel like there are songs that have come up on my playlist right at the right time, right when I need to hear them. Um, so absolutely, like it's a huge confidence booster for me and I'm sure for other people too. Um, how do you know if it's a confidence booster? How about like, do you have a playlist on your phone that's called insert your name, here's jams? <laughs> that's how you know. <laughs> that's some confidence, confidence booster shit right there. Oh my God, guys. Do you remember how excited we all got in the late 2000s, early 2010s when I've Got a Feeling by the Black Eyed Peas came on? <laughs> hoo hoo. Like there was, not a, <laughs> there was not a house party in my university that didn't just blare that song on repeat for hours, four hours of I've Got a Feeling. You know, that song made us all confident enough to fist bump. Because there is no other dance that you could do to that song other than just fist bump and do like fake little laser guns when it went, we've got a rock, 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 rock. That's confidence. That's power music right there. All of us, every single one of us, just finger gunning each other. <laughs> I think that means something else. And we'll forget it. And fist bumping and reaching for another natty light or Hawaiian punch if you heard this at your middle school dance and... If you did hear this at your middle school dance, can you just come break into my house and put a pillow on my face and just let me drift off to death? Because we all believed when we listened to that in college that tonight was going to be a good night. And we were blessed with that confidence to to make that night the goodest night of all. Thanks to Will I Am and Fergie. And, and wow. Wow. American history right there. Freedom. Liberty. And the black eyed peas. Okay, what's next? Do you guys hear my dog right now? We took a bone away from him earlier because he was using it as a battery ram against the drywall in my hallway. And now, because he knows it's in here with me, he's just crying outside of the door. Sorry if you hear that. Anyway, the next one. What makes you feel confident when I nail a presentation? Yes, 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 yes. This is such, that is such a high. Oh my God. I don't do drugs. I went to D.A.R.E. I did D.A.R.E. In, in elementary school, but like nailing a presentation, like walking out of a boardroom, just high as a freaking kite. I love that feeling. Looking out in a room of people and like seeing smiles and nods and just getting like good, not superficial, not, you know, passive aggressive questions. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Confidence through the roof. Friends, if I can sidetrack for a moment, I used to be terrified of public speaking. And now I'm doing it in a microphone in a little tiny little corner of my room for fun. <laughs> What's that about? Like I used to be a quiet little church mouse, just muttering my opinions and insults and passive aggressive comments like under my breath. And But then I, I had a really, really amazing leader when I worked at Disney who pushed me to audition to be a basically a day one trainer. Um, it's the first class you ever take working at Disney's called Traditions and it was to be a facilitator of this class. And yes, I had to audition. Like I had to get in front of like a hundred people. I had to um, captivate them for at least two minutes. And then after that first round, we had scripts we had to memorize. We had to get with like people we didn't know and work with them. And all of this auditioning ultimately got me to the point where I actually got to be one of these trainers. And then about once a week, um, me and a peer of mine would just stand in front of anywhere between 20 and like 90 first day employees and operating participants and tell them how great it was to work at Disney, which that part wasn't hard, honestly, maintaining a script and holding their attention for eight whole hours. That was really, really hard. But I remember being really, really nervous before my first ever class that I was teaching. And again, my amazing leader at the time told me her secret to great presentation giving because I had always, I had always admired how conversational and captivating she was. And so I was like, I'm scared. <laughs> how do I do this? 
And she just said so simply, and it stuck with me all these years, Allie, there is so much power in standing in front of a room of people and knowing you know more than the people you're talking to. And I was never afraid of public speaking again because she was right. I got up in front of my first group of trainees and I kind of flubbed my line a little bit and I started to beat myself up. But then I was like, these people don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> these people don't know my script. They don't know that I messed anything up, right? And when you t- put, in the, put in the work and you know your stuff, you know, and you know your material backwards and forwards and you truly believe in what you're presenting, you will always nail a presentation. No ifs, ands, or buts. And then you too can feel high as a freaking kite walking out of a boardroom one day. Next one. This one says, when I have on red lipstick and black eyeliner. Okay. Okay, girl. We love a bold lip and a wing liner. Go ahead and serve me some vintage pinup face. I'm like living for that shade of red that perfectly complements your skin tone on you. Your makeup looks amazing. You're killing it. You're confident. Yes, honey. Next one. I receive words of affirmation. Well, of course you do. Because you're a badass, confident queen and we love you for it. This does remind me, though, friends, if you're listening to this podcast, you made it this far, and you're having a hard time trying to figure out what actually makes you feel confident, what your jean jacket is, um, I highly suggest starting with like learning what your love language is. I know I've talked about these a little bit before. I think I talked about them in the um, conversation we had about my marriage. Um, but there are five love languages. It's like acts of service, giving gifts, quality time, um, physical touch, words of affirmation. One, two, three, four, five. And I, I, um, I believe that there's like also like a quiz you can take, but we read a book, um, that was like super easy read. You can get on Amazon. Um, but basically your love language helps you understand how we give love, and how we want to receive love, like what being loved means to us. Uh, it's great, I think like critical, required reading for relationships, just to understand how you're like programmed to feel cared for and how that may differ from your spouse, right? <clears throat> and um, confidence, you know, let's be real, it's an extension of self-love. If, if you don't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else, right? So if you don't love yourself, how are you ever going to tell yourself if you're feeling yourself, you know? Like, I recommend find out what your love language is. This person's is obviously words of affirmation. And of course, because they're fabulous, right? We love them. Um, But figure out how, like, how you perceive love and then try to find a way to love yourself in that way every day, right? Like, it'll totally help your confidence. Trust me. Next one. I feel confident when my bra and underwear matches. Unstoppable. I love this. I love this. Oh, my bra and underwear have never matched, um, ever. And maybe this is what I'm missing in my life. Okay, ladies, I know ladies will get this. Gents and non-binary unicorn people, I don't know if you've had the same kind of experience. Please tell me. Please educate me. But do you remember the very first time you have ever, like, you ever bought underwear, like, without your parents? Like, your mom wasn't with you at Target when you bought, you know, the first time you, like, got yourself, like, a black bra, or like a pair of like silky red panties. And maybe you were like the only one who got to see them at the time that you bought them. But when you wore it, your confidence just like soared because you were like sitting on a little secret that only you knew. I remember, and maybe this is TMI, but I made it this far. <laughs> I remember the first time me, it was like when I was in college, some, me and my, some of my girlfriends went and we bought like silky 90s from Victoria's Secret like by ourselves. And I bought it and I never wore it to bed or honestly, I don't think I ever wore it for other people, but just knowing that I owned it (laughs) and that I had it like hidden in my undie drawer made me feel so like grown up and cool and like metropolitan, you know, and that, that, that thought and feeling of feeling grown up and cool and metropolitan, like I would be the kind of woman that would wear like stilettos and like a beret and smoke out of a really long cigarette and I own teddies in my drawer, right? I get that same feeling now, like that same feeling of confidence of like a little secret that's driving me because it's something that only I know, right? I get that same feeling now when I put on a pair of leggings that doesn't show my entire underwear when I bend over. And that, my friends, is is progress or or it's something, right? Moving on. This person said, I feel confident surrounding myself with people who love me. 
and wearing outfits that I love. Yes. Yep. This is a good one. Yes. We've, we've covered fashion and outwardly appearance a bit already, but let's get real about how people affect our confidence too. I am a people pleaser to a fault. I hook my little bird talons <laughs> into friendships and I don't let them go unless I like really like screw up but even then like my talents are sunk into you and I could really screw up a friendship and I'm sure I'll share a story of how I screwed up one of the best friendships I had in my life but whatever um but then even then like I expect them not to leave me right like I think a lot of it is commitment you know or just feeling lonely all the time and never wanting to be alone but um I had to teach myself pretty recently actually which is a shame that I had to learn it so late in my life but that I don't need to cling to everybody right that there are people that don't deserve to be in my life. Um, and maybe you feel the same way too. Like, have you ever had a friend that always had like something to say about every little single thing you did? You know, every life choice, every relationship, every business presentation, if they're a work person, I don't know. But then those same people like never bothered to support you or celebrate your success or personal milestones with you. Or have you ever like known people that you feel like you have to just like walk on eggshells around and when you leave hanging out with them, you're exhausted because you feel like you've just like faked it, right? Like you feel like you haven't been yourself and then that just like makes you feel like a trashy person, right? Like I feel like when we're young, and I know I definitely was taught this, like we were taught to believe in maintaining relationships for like as long as they are possible because a friend is a treasured gift. And I've always believed that, that I have some friendships that have lasted a lifetime and that I'm certain will like die old together. Um, but I have some that have come and they've gone and we've gone our separate ways. And maybe it ends with one of us hurting each the other. And maybe it just ends with us mutually ghosting each other because we've moved in separate paths, right? But the longer that I've been alive, the more that I've realized, and I didn't really fully grasp it until maybe a year or two ago, that like there are people that come into our lives at certain moments. And in those moments that they're in our lives, we forge relationships with them and we invest in those relationships because at some, at, for some reason, they are meeting some need that we were missing in our lives, whether it's validation, whether it's comfort, whether it's just like sheer partnership, whatever, right? But at some point, we don't like who we are with them or we don't really like the them. Like we realize that the need that we had initially when we hung out with them, you know, has been met and we don't really like them anymore. You know, so then maybe we try to feel like we force the relationship because we have invested so much time and resource and energy into it, you know, to get to a, this point or we helped each other through a mutual pain or whatever. But I'm just realizing that we can go through those things and we can have those moments. We can have those friends that help us through those hard times and we can help people through our hard times, but we don't need to force them to stay in our lives if they're no longer serving the needs that they once were, right? They don't need to be in our lives if we feel like we don't need them there, right? Like if we're happier when they're not there, we're all just like far too old, <laughs> we're far too old, our backs hurt, okay, from carrying these relationships around, from spending our time trying to please people who we just genuinely don't like and who genuinely don't support us in whatever is our key focus and passion project at the time. You want to stick with people who, who make you feel the most yourself, okay? Like, you want to sit with friends where you feel like you don't have to say, oh, I shouldn't bring up my podcast with them. Like, they don't care, right? Like, you don't need to sit with people like that, right? People who you don't like, you know, who aren't going to support you. You want to sit with people who are going to listen to when you're down, you know, and sing when you're up. And people that you can just wear the warmth of their nurturing relationship like a jean jacket. Because it'll always cover you. Yeah, I think that's a good place to stop. Confidence, guys. Confidence begets confidence, okay? Wear what you want. Do your makeup however you want. Be with who you want to be with, okay? But take care of yourself. Find ways to make yourself feel like the celebrated queen, unicorn, mermaid, majestic lion fish that walks on earth with her own tomb feet, okay? Like, you guys are killing it. 
I believe in you. You believe in me. Let's all just be freaking confident bitches out there knocking down the patriarchy one peg at a time. We'll be right back right after this. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening today. Um, I love doing this. I hope you guys love listening. Um, And thank you for submitting your confidence boosters on Instagram. If you want to share your own experiences um, for um, potentially to be featured in future episodes, just go ahead and follow at the campaign her on Instagram. Um, And we always post those things in our stories and on our feeds. Um, On our Instagram, you can also see pictures from this and earlier episodes and just stay up to date on all the latest and greatest campaign her nonsense. Um, We always encourage you guys to support the podcast with sticker purchases um, now available on Etsy. Um, We just had some really cute ones made up for the podcast that say you're doing great, sweetie. And now when you purchase two or more stickers, we'll give you that one for free. Just use coupon code podcast at checkout on Etsy. You can visit our blog, um, campaignher.com, for other episodes, to read more stories, um, whatever you would like. Uh, Again, campaignher.com is our website. And please continue to review and subscribe. We're getting closer to our goal of being featured on the new and noteworthy segment of Apple Podcasts. So every review and every listen counts. Um, So we encourage you not only to rate, but also leave a review, send it to your friends, have them leave a review, have them rate. Um, lather, rinse, repeat, right? New episodes drop every Thursday. Until then, you're doing great, sweetie. Bye.